Hi, welcome to this short video where we are going to be running through a demonstration of the Mango Compliance Software Audit and Inspection Module. My name is Chris from FQM. We're a global partner for Mango Software and here we are uh, in front of a Mango demo account. First of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through the back end system inside the system admin area where I'm going to demonstrate the method of setting up an audit and inspection form and then the methodology of how you would apply that for use in your business. It's important to remember that anyone who has a license to use the Mango software also has free use of the mobile app and therefore allows you to undertake these audits inspections directly on the mobile app as well. So I'm going to scroll down to the system admin area. And then I'm going to go into the audit setup. Inside audit setup, we have audit form template. When I go into the audit form template, what I want to do is hit the big orange button and where I'm going to create a new audit form template. So this audit form template, we are going to give it a name of what it is associated to. So let's just say this is associated to uh, a form of inspection that we're going to do on a particular piece of equipment. So let's just call this equipment number one inspection form. And here's a tool tip where we can give some uh, additional description of what the form is used for. So this inspection form is used for the inspection of equipment number one inside our operations facility, for example. We have to identify who the auditor or auditors are going to be. So in the case of this one, we're going to say that this guy, Chris Dougherty, can use this uh, audit form and also this individual, Anthony. And the reviewer of this uh, generally would be a colleague or someone else within the organization that would review to check that these activities have been completed, in particular if they're associated to some form of compliance uh, which may be associated to your ISO standard or a legal requirement. I'm going to say in this case, for demo purposes, it's just going to be myself. Um, but here's an example of what it would look like. OK, so we've put in the initial basic information. We now have to add sections. So we click the add section button and we click the arrow to drop down. And we can see here that we can't use it until we start configuring this section. The so first thing we're going to do is we're going to configure the scoring. So we hit the add score button and then we give the name of this score. Um, so in the case of this one, we're going to just simply be pass or fail and we're going to give it a score. So in the case of this one, we're going to use a percentage. So we're going to use 100 percent and a green color. And we are going to say here that we also have a fail, which would be zero and a case of this one it's red of course you can have other information in here like improve non-conformance etc etc so whatever is appropriate for the form that you are setting up and of course the values you use is completely up to yourself we generally use ours using a percentage uh, of 100 being correct and different grades associated to that so now it's adding me to set up either add a question or a subsection title. So in the case of this, we're going to go to the section setup and we're going to give this a section name. So the first thing we're going to look at here is we're going to refer to equipment. Power. So this a tool tip here is inspection of equipment power source. And here, this NA option. So this is a good area where if you place NA in here, 
and it's given as a drop down. So before you've seen that we had pass or fail as the scoring methodology, we put NA for the whole section, which means that if a selection is made of NA, not applicable, then this area then or this question is not associated to the scoring it's removed from the scoring so it's quite good to have that in there so there's the option for people to use that so now what we're going to do is we are going to look to set up some questions so here we have a reference so a reference could be for example just our number so number one so we want to check first of all the power source so is the power source to the equipment in good condition? So that's that, that's a question, okay? We can have put a tool tip here that might give a suggestion of what good condition means. So we might say here that there is no damage to cable or connections. And we hit OK. So here we've got our question now, and here is our tool tip. We want to uh, add another uh, question in here, so we just simply add another question. And this case is going to be number two. And remember, you don't have to have a reference, you don't have to have a tool tip, but you do need to put something in the name area, which will be the uh, question you're going to ask. OK. So is the battery the battery back up in place and fully charged. In the case of the tooltip here, so refer to the battery backup indicator showing green if fully charged. So here's an example of what we're looking at. So here we've now got two questions associated to the equipment power and it's an inspection of the equipment power source. And here we have our two questions. We might want to add another section that might be something else to do with the equipment. So here, let's look at setting this up again. So in the case of this one, it might not be pass fail. It might be acceptable, not acceptable, or some other scoring methodology. So in this case, we're going to make it a little bit different just to mix it up a little bit. So acceptable is 100% and is green and move is 50 and is orange and unacceptable is zero and red. So now we've got our scoring set up. We want to set up our section. So we want to give it a name associated to this section. So this would be uh, related to the, uh, let's say, some other section. So let's think of something we're going to use. So this one we're going to look at is we're going to look at the pressure. So the section name is pressure performance area is looking at Assessing the pressure performance of the equipment. And again, uh, we would put not applicable if that was not applicable in the case of this test. So we're looking at pressure performance. This area is looking at assessing the pressure performance of the equipment. And now we need to add some questions. So again, we'll just mix it up a little bit. We'll put an A in this case instead of a one, just showing you you can do different methodologies. So the question we're going to be asking here is, is the equipment pressurized to the correct level? So correct level for this equipment is, let's say, bar okay and we may want to add another question if we wish and so on and so forth and build up our requirements what i'll show you here is it's possible to put in a section and also to have a subsection within 
an area like this, OK? Um, so I'm just going to remove this. And now what I have is I've got a question set up. Excuse me, that was a sneeze. What I have now is I've got a couple of sections set up with some questions. We can click on the arrow and just check them again. If there was something I wasn't sure of, of the spelling, of course, I can go in and edit the question, go into the question setup and adjust it. If I wanted to adjust the way the questions were flowing, I can click this arrow and it will move the questions. But of course, I want number one first. And now what it's asking me to do is simply to save. So I'm going to save this audit template, which I've created, which is equipment number one inspection form. While I'm in here, what I'm going to show you is a methodology of how you can make a copy of this if it's another audit that you want to do that's very similar but may need some adjustment. Then you simply just hit the clone button and it allows you to copy this template, rename it, giving it another number, and then you can make some modifications if you wish to adjust it to the new template you want to create. Why would you do that? Well, it simply just allows you to take some information that you've already captured to save you having to retype it again. Um, so this is a, a good way of kind of quickly making a new audit inspection form, but making some modifications to it. This is also important that once an audit is live and you want to make significant changes, then you can copy the existing one, add a number of new questions to it. The previous audit, you may want to make it unavailable, and then you make the new version live and create your schedule based on that. So of course, Right now, this audit cannot be used as it's not live. It's still sitting in the system admin only area. So what we want to do is we want to make it live so that we can use it. If I click make live, it asks me if I'm sure I want to do that and I hit confirm. You can see here now it allows me to make it unavailable if I wish. When I go into edit this area now, there's certain things that will it will allow me to do and certain things it will not. So you can see it doesn't allow me to add sections because it's a live audit inspection form. Uh, it allows me to make some modifications to the existing questions and it allows me to look at the section set up. Uh, not much more than that. And that's just simply so that we don't interfere with this audit and inspection form that may have been used already. So it's a live form now, which means that when I go back up to the main audit and inspection area, I can use it. And also it will be available for me to use on the, the audit area of the app. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into manage audits. And this is where I'm going to set up a six monthly inspection of this particular piece of equipment. So I'm going to go in and add here. And it's going, first thing it's going to ask me is the audit form. So if I go into equipment, then we can see this audit form equipment number one has appeared. So I want to select that form and I want to give it a title of what that is. So this is going to be the inspection of equipment number one. And are we going to use this in any particular area or branch or department? So we know that this is going to be used in our operations department. Of course, you don't have to select any of this information. It's only the red asterisk areas that have to be entered. But this can give you more information to narrow down anything in particular. If we had our uh, assets inside Mango as well, we could select the equipment asset number from the list here uh, and say that this is the equipment. And then it will show that data and allow us to report on that particular equipment. For the case of, for the sake of this demo, we're going to uh, assign the audit to Chris and again to Chris as a reviewer simply for this demo purposes and this training purposes. And we on this particular audit, we can put some notes if we wish uh, that might be uh, giving additional information for this auditor. So this is not the notes that's on the main form. These are specific to this particular audit we, we are going to set up. So as you can see, the questions flow through. So we can have a quick look and see, yep, that's right, that's the questions we set up. If we save at this point in time, then effectively this is a one-time audit which we have assigned 
to Chris to undertake um, called inspection of equipment number one. However, if we want to schedule this on a regular basis, then we go to the event schedule area. So in the case of this one, we want to do this on a six monthly basis. So we're going to create a six monthly inspection of equipment number one. And we want that to start, let's say, from tomorrow. And as it's six monthly, it's going to be repeated every six months. And just to give Chris a bit of notice, we're going to let him know a week before. So he plans his week out the following week. And because it's part of our compliance, um, if he doesn't do it within a set period, we're going to send him a reminder, which is every two weeks. And of course, we have to put down who the event owner is. Now, in the case of this one, Chris is on Mango, so we would put Chris's name down as the owner. However, it is possible that the owner could be the operations manager and therefore he may mention to Chris, you've got that audit to do because Chris might not have access to emails. So the event owner is the person that's going to receive the email about it. And um, so it could be the manager, the supervisor that sent the email so that he can pass on the information and Chris can undertake the audit on the app. We're also going to copy in the operations manager so that he is aware that this audit is taking place. And of course, if there was a requirement to involve someone external to the business, then we may want to put an external email address there so that that person is notified. And here we have the email description of what should be done. So, dear user, please undertake the required inspection using this Mango checklist and record all results directly in Mango. Remember to make notes as you go along inside Mango and raise any improvements if required. Something like that. Now it's important to remember at this stage that we can add additional information here if we wish. So if we had uh, maybe an operations manual in our Mango document system, um, we may want to link that there. Um, so we can go to this particular area, which is our internal uh, embedded manuals and procedures, or we can go to this area that might be our internal files. So we may have, uh, you know, some sort of manual or something in here that we want to use. So here we've got a basic user's manual. So let's say it's this one here. So you see here it creates this link. What that means is it means that you're providing the necessary information to the person that's undertaking the audit through the email to show them that here is the user manual uh, just in case you need to reference it. Of course, we can also link to external locations as well. So if there was an external user's manual, then we can get that from the internet and we can drop the URL in here and hit OK and therefore the URL will be dropped in as well. Importantly, we you have an escalation as well. And that escalation depends on how critical this is. So because this is a, a pressured equipment, we're going to say we're not going to allow it to go much more than three months before it goes to one of our more senior people within the organization um, or someone else that can do the job that will provide some support in the escalation because the individual, Chris, could be on holiday or sick leave or something like that. So we hit save at this point. So we now can see that we have this particular inspection required on this particular equipment and we've got a schedule set up as well. So if we were to go to the individual that has to do this particular task, we would be aware that the individual would have received uh, email associated to this and they would also be made aware of the audit inside their dashboard. So you can see here on this dashboard, 
we can see here that equipment number one is due for inspection. So we can click directly here to undertake it. So now we're going to undertake the audit. Like anything inside Mango, we have to click edit. We scroll down and here we have our questions. So is the power source to the equipment in good condition? We can see the tool tip. So we may say here, yeah, it's passed. And we can put some notes here. So confirmed the power source is good and all information appropriate. That might be enough to add. We may want to add some supporting evidence to this. So we might want to upload an image. We may have an image that we want to upload. And of course, doing this on a, on a smartphone is much easier. So we may have an image here that we've taken that we can just add to this particular uh, question as evidence to support this. Is the battery backup fully charged? And we can see we've got some tool tips here. So we might say here, actually, this is not applicable for this one. This equipment doesn't have a battery backup. We may want to also provide some note here. Again, we might just say no backup on this equipment. So it just gives some evidence to support. Now what we do is we scroll down because we've completed this section and we can see there was one question complete. So we scored 100%. The not applicable doesn't count towards the scoring here. If we go down, we now have another uh, question, which is the equipment pressurized to the correct level and we see the bar. So we're going to say here that this needs to be improved. It's not acceptable. And maybe add a note. Pressure level only reaching 8 bar after minutes of inspection. Action required. So we may say here suggest calling out engineer to resolve. So here we made a wee note here that this needs to be improved and we've got a note why we're going to do that. The person that may be responsible for undertaking the improvement uh, may not be around. So we might want to suggest that we raise a direct improvement inside Mango. So we might say here something to do with equipment. Number one, pressure failure. And what is this associated to? Well, this is associated to an audit finding and the source of the improvement. So we may want to mention the actual uh, source came from the audit, so we can free text in here, or we can simply select employee and say, well, it was me that was doing the audit. So I'm just going to say that the source of this came from my inspection and the date that it occurred was today and some details. So under the six monthly inspection of Equipment number one, the pressure only oh, reached eight bar. Action required to call out engineer and resolve. So coordinator here, we're going to say in the case of this one is we're going to send this out to one of our other colleagues who is going to take some action associated to this. And we may at this stage also just let the operations manager know about it. And also it's maybe because of this is a compliance system, we're just going to let our health and safety team be aware as well. We don't have to put any other information in here because this improvement will link directly to the audit. So when we hit save, we can see an improvement number has been raised. And we can see this improvement is linked here. What we can also see is because of our scoring mechanism, in the case of this section, it only achieved a score of 50%. And overall, for the complete audit, we can see it got 75%. We double check, make sure everything's clear, what we have. We're happy with everything. So we're going to save it. Of course, by saving it, we could go on our lunch break. We may want to go and ask some questions of someone come back, hit edit again, maybe add a little bit more information. We may have some more information. So we could add in here another note. So 
just add whatever it would be. And then at this stage, and you can see each time a note's added, a timestamp is put against it by the individual. So we've now completed this audit, so we're going to save it. And of course, we have to sign off. Where we're saying sign off, we can put a comment, complete, whatever it may be. So we may say in this case, equipment needs to be locked out and not used. See improvement, okay? So in the case of this one, we've now put a comment in, as you can see, it adds it down here. And we've now closed off in this audit. So this audit has been completed. In the case of when the audit's complete, it then goes to the reviewer to undertake a review of the audit. Um, so we'll just check here if a review has been added into this. So we can see here that this audit is still sitting here and it's saying here that it's now pending for review. So the reviewer has the opportunity to return it to the auditor, maybe to if he made a mistake, or the, the, the reviewer has the opportunity not to edit the information that's there, but maybe to add some additional notes that may be required. OK, so let's say in this case that the auditor wants to close it out. So they might want to make some summary notes. Uh, so might be here we say something like John, ensure equipment is isolated. Not used until repaired. And we can add another comment if we wish. Once we confirm this, you can see what's happened is this audit has now been completed. We are able to go in and check the evidence associated to this. So we can see we have our audit in here against equipment number one, which was complete and is now greyed out. We see the scoring and we see the next audit scheduled for six months later. And again, this will be available on the app as well. What we're able to do in here as well is we're able to export our audit report. So if it was, let's say we're talking, say we wanted to send this to the external engineering company. They wanted more information. We can send the audit report to them, which will pull in the information of when it was done, the questions that were asked, any images that were added, associated to it and of course it adds everything as a summary. So that's a quick run through of the audit and inspection module um, taking you through the back end of how you set up the forms and how quick and easy it is to do and then going through the process of how you would actually manage an audit so that you can set up a schedule. So hopefully that was useful. Um, if you need to get a demo in more detail of everything that Mango software can do for you, then please log on to our website and put in a demo request. Uh, but I'd just like to remind everyone if they could subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on LinkedIn. Thank you.